Hello, Pastor Leonard. It's really good to see you. It's my honour, Steve, to see you. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, how, how, how's, how's it going at the clinic and uh, with the community caregivers at the moment? Well, the health uh, staff, I mean, is working under huge pressure because of this uh, COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Otherwise, health-wise, they're doing okay. When you say they're under pressure, what, how, what does that look like? Well, uh, for example, the nurses um, in, at the clinic, I mean, they wouldn't, um, I mean, um, call the next uh, patient in their rooms before, I mean, they make sure that, I mean, uh, the room is being uh, sanitized and so on. So it really, um, it, it's a risk, um, I mean, um, what they do. And again, the, uh, the, the, the carers, I mean, uh, uh, and are uh, discouraged to do home visits by the Department of Health. So they are focused uh, here at the clinic. Uh, they would uh, make sure that uh, social distance is being kept, uh, people do sanitize, and also while the, the patient is still waiting for to be seen, they would um, bring awareness uh, of uh, these um, um, diseases like uh, HIV and AIDS and COVID-19. It's great how the you know the the role the caregivers are playing in supporting the the, the this very the very busy clinic at the moment, and and during May and April um, we had an emergency appeal um, to help you and the community there during lockdown. Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about what was lockdown like in South Africa, in Embo, and how you responded as a team. Well, it has um, left um, most uh, community members, I mean, uh, the situation worse than before um, in terms of um, food and uh, other um, social challenges. But uh, we are so thankful that uh, Medic Assist International were so uh, helpful to find us to, to buy food parcels. So our focus was um, feeding um, HIV and AIDS uh, we take, um, I mean, patients and TB that helps us a lot. And also, uh, we uh, also did a program to help uh, the uh, children that I mean, come for immunization. Because, I mean, uh, according to the nurse who uh, was working with the children, she discovered that uh, the weight of the children, um, of most children, really proved that, I mean, uh, they're not fed with uh, uh, any studies to do uh, a program to, to do uh, a feeding um, scheme for these children. Mm. But really all is possible through MAI. And then uh, we did, uh, with, uh, I had a meeting with the board of the church. So we took uh, part of the fund. We, uh, we did something to sustain our project. Uh, so we, we bought a uh, uh, we decided to buy um, second-hand clothes from one of the wholesalers uh, in Devon. So in, it is working. So at the moment, we are selling clothes here at the church, and then we, would be, we are able to buy a full parcel for uh, those uh, patients that are in critical. That, that is it's really good to hear about we were able to support you during that moment of crisis, and then you started an initiative to be able to buy and, and to provide people with food that, that desperately needed. Um, that wasn't the only initiative uh, you've, take, you've been working on uh, around the sustainability of the clinic. You also spoke with the Department of Health. Uh, how did you get on there? Well, uh, due to um, COVID-19 uh, challenges and the Department of Health find it difficult and was forced to close some of private health institutions. But uh, we were so thankful to God that I mean, ours were not closed because they could see uh, the reality or the need of, the, of our clinic. So um, now, uh, currently, um, MAI was funding us for uh, the TB nurse who is working to twice a week. So now the Department of Health is going to take over uh, from that uh, funding. Also, the uh, Department of Health is going to pay part of 50% uh, of the driver's salary and 50% of the security's salary. 
what we believe that's for a short time. Yeah. You know? Well, that, that's, that's really good. And we will continue to, to support the other parts of the cost of the clinic and the work of the community caregivers next year. But it's, it's just so good that the Department of Health, uh, two things, one is they're stepping up and they're supporting you more. But secondly, they're recognizing what a quality health center you run. Uh, just to end with, how can we pray? What sort of things can we be praying for you at the moment and the team? Well, um, as I said earlier, if you can please pray for the nurses, or let me put it this way, the health workers are working under difficult uh, situations. I mean, um, it's, it's very, very hard to pray for them. So they, have, they need courts and protection. If you may also pray for this um, clothing project business to grow, because it really helped uh, people uh, uh, help us really to get uh, funding to buy a uh, food parcel for needy people. Lastly, for the transport, which is a great need. The one that we have currently, I mean, from time to time, I mean, we have to, um, I mean, gives us problems need to be taken to the mechanic and so on. So we felt it needs to be replaced. And it does a very, very, uh, I mean, important work uh, in our health facility. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, we will be praying. Uh, we've done an appeal, a fundraising appeal for the, the vehicle. I think we're probably got almost 75% there. So hopefully soon we'll be able to uh, send you the funds to replace your, your current vehicle. And thank you very much. Um, what you're doing is, is amazing. I'm always very impressed uh, by the quality of your work and the light you are in, in your community. Thank you, Leonard. Take care. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bless you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.